If you play video games at all in any capacity, I'm sure you're familiar with the concept of remasters and remakes. It's the process of refining older titles and bringing them into the next generation, with varying degrees of effort put in. Sometimes you might get Resident Evil 4 for the PC, and uh, other times you might get Resident Evil 4 for the PC. For a lot of other mediums, such as movies and TV, the modern re-release isn't always a necessity, but for video games, it's almost mandatory to give old beloved titles a nice new coat of polish. I mean, it's not like I can just rent Silent Hill 2 on Amazon for a few bucks. I quite literally have to own a PS2, a legit copy of the game, and a CRT to play it on. And the rest of us stuck at home with normal people technology are just kind of fucked if we want to experience literally the best horror game of all time. Therefore, re-releases exist. Mainly for media preservation reasons and general accessibility, but the multi-million dollar payday is pretty nice too. I mean, hell, why go through the trouble of creating something original when you can just update some crappy water textures and call it a day? I mean, shit, man, if I could just re-upload my FNAF video over and over again and slap the word HD on it, let's just say I wouldn't be making this video. But at what point should we draw the line? When does a re-release devolve from a celebration of the past into a soulless cash grab. When is a remake necessary? And why aren't you fun at parties? In today's video, I hope to not only answer, uh, most of these questions, but also give an explanation as to why we even have to ask them in the first place. But before we can do that, let's take a brief look at the past of video game re-releases so we can try to make sense of- <laughs> Hold on, let me- let me get that. Hello. Saying that video games tend to age fast is a bit of an understatement. From the PS5 to the Game Boy, how games look, play, and even interact with the player has been constantly changing since the 90s. Little quirks and trends from even just a few years ago got thrown out all the time in favor of general accessibility and convenience. The initial random encounter systems first adopted in the 90s with JRPGs such as Pokemon and Final Fantasy have now been long phased out for more direct methods of choosing when a battle starts. It's not something that seems like a big deal when reading it out on paper, but in terms of actual gameplay, uh... Uh, with the new 4G's all in the cheap, I trap into the bloody bo- Oh, ooh, we're going, we're going into battle. Into battle. Yes, yes. Look at this ugly motherfucker. One hit, one hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, try me again, pussy. Try me fucking again, but I am completely fucking lost. I don't know where to go. Okay, okay, another fight. All right, let's see. Man, it's the same fucking guy. What the fuck is this? I don't think I left the house in like two days. Oh well, my fucking god! It's all small things that bog down older titles like this when you're in an industry that is constantly innovating. What could seem like the smartest thing to do now in 20 years could easily be considered dog shit. I'm talking loading screens, weird textures, janky controls, unfixable game-breaking glitches. You know how most games nowadays release initially in diaper-ass conditions only to be fixed later with patches and updates? Back then, you couldn't even update shit, period. If your game had glitches back Back in the day, the best thing you could do is try to turn it into a speedrun strat. But despite this, people still found ways to enjoy these games in their respective eras. With some of these games even being dubbed as all-time greats, or even achievements for the medium. The only problem being that trying to revisit some of these older titles in present day can be a little, uh, unpredictable, to say the least. You know, I think I think the main reason why why Final Fantasy VII is one of my favorite games to revisit, just uh, just from the PS1 era, I think the dialogue out of a lot of other games, it's just, it's just aged the most... I don't think he could say that word. Introducing the modern re-release. Or remaster. And remake. These three things are kind of different, yet also kind of the same. They all serve the same general purpose, but again, vary in the amount of effort put in. Typically, remasters aim to reserve the original experience of the game, with little improvements added here and there. This means maybe higher quality shadows, turning up the brightness in areas, raising the FPS, and uh, fucking a uh, funky Kong. Funky Kong. Funky Kong. Funky Kong. But remakes, on the other hand, completely rebuild everything. Assets, controls, gameplay, art direction. Yeah, not every remake is built the same. Some completely forget what the original appeal of the game is, some completely fuck up the gameplay, and in worst case scenario, can end up completely inferior to the original game. Take for example, Majora's Mask 3D. You know how bad you gotta mess up to make me want to use God's least favorite child over the 3DS? It's an actual crime how good this remake looks versus how dog shit some of the mechanics are. You try doing the lily pad parkour sections in the original and get through it no fucking problem, but the remake 
completely fumbles these mechanics and trade for FromSoft level parkour systems. Not to mention the swimming's fucked up, half the boss fights suck, and the saving system was made for goldfish with Alzheimer's. Though when all the stars line up for remakes and everything goes smoothly, it can easily become one of the most definitive and best ways to play a game, period. Trying to go back to the original RE2's tank controls and outdated graphics while charming can be a little bit of a headache. The old Tekken gameplay really take away from what was a legitimately terrifying experience back in the day. Though, with a little updating and the backbreaking labor from dozens of Capcom employees, we can get shit like this. The most disgusting hamburger you've ever laid eyes on. Even something as small as standing in the middle of a hallway fills me with overwhelming dread in RE2 Remake. While changing a whole camera system for something like this does sound a little bit questionable, I think it makes the horror experience, at least in my personal opinion, a lot more like you're actually there. Backing away from zombies, sneaking under roller doors, seeing Mr. X up close and intimate, it's all so much better. It feels like what the game would have initially been had the technology been this advanced upon release. It's everything a remake should be, plus more. And it's opened up many doors for other big horror game remakes, such as the Dead Space remake that came out last year, and the upcoming Silent Hill 2 remake. But the real question I want to get to is, have there been too many doors open recently? Personally, I'd say not enough doors. Mingus, how the fuck did you get in here? Oh. Smashed your window. Jesus Christ. Yeah, they were surprisingly easy to break open. You might want to look into that one. Why are you here? Well, you did say I could be in your video. I did say that, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Well, like, what What do you want to talk about? Well, seeing the direction you're taking this video, I want to talk about how you're being a massive bitch. What? The Last of Us remakes. You're gonna talk to me about The Last of Us remakes. Well, I mean, I was like, I was getting there, I just, like, I haven't mentioned it yet. Well, go on then. What's wrong with them? Okay, well, don't you find it weird that there's more remasters and remakes in that series than actual games? Yeah, I'm just gonna stop you right there. I've seen time and time again imbeciles like you on Twitch trying to bash this remake over what are really hypocritical and weird terms. This game is a gem, and I will gladly go stab myself in the eyeballs before I let punks like you walk all over it. It's just a $70 reskin of a previously released game. I don't know why you're writing for it so hard. <sighs> Have you even played the remake? Okay. No, I haven't, but- You stupid fuck. You absolute donkey. You haven't even played the remake and you're sitting around here judging it without even experiencing it. Well, I- Give me the goddamn mic. The Last of Us is a game series I've always heard about, but I've never really taken upon myself to get into. While everyone last year was crying over some gay HBO episode with Ron Swanson in it, I was busy watching real shows like Young Sheldon and Secret Invasion. But as time passed on, certain friends nudged me one way or the other until I was practically forced by gunpoint to play this game when my benevolent boss who's paying my rent gave it to me for Christmas. And let me tell you, I finally get it now. It's a once in a lifetime story about two unlikely friends in a rotting world that's about to devour them. The characters are complex, the environment's dramatic and stunning, and everything surrounding this game serves a purpose to complement itself in one way or another. It's as close to perfect storytelling in a video game as one can get, and I frankly have nothing but adoration for this remake. Okay, so what I'm hearing is you enjoy the third most popular video game of all time. Glad to know we're on the same page. By the way, while you were fucking off watching, uh, Teletubbies or whatever, everyone and their grandma had played the original eight years fucking prior. I mean, I'm glad you had a good experience with your first time in the series, but for the rest of us, this remake is completely pointless. The original remaster looks and plays perfectly fine to this day, and it still makes no sense why we get a remake of it before another original project from Naughty Dog. I have to respectfully disagree. You just don't like the remake because you've already experienced the original. You can argue that it's unnecessary all you want, but it's still a goddamn banger of a game. I mean, I said I was glad you liked it, I just don't really think it needs to exist. No video games need to exist, Indy. Do any of the FNAF games need to exist? I mean, no. No, I guess not. That just feels like a really weird example. Is it though? Is it really? In your Zelda video, you say you enjoy the virtual reality remakes of the first three FNAF games, yet here in your Living Tombstone video, you admit the series has dragged on and realistically should have ended at FNAF 3. So, which one is it? Okay, yeah, the virtual reality remakes are completely unnecessary, but I mean, they up the horror factor super substantially, and it, it, it's a complete overhaul. It's not like they're the exact same games. And neither is The Last of Us Part 1. Okay, well at least FNAF isn't 70 fucking dollars. It's not if you're smart about it, there are sales all the time. Yeah, that's still $40, buddy. It's an old ass game. And tell me, Indy, how much did you spend on Help Wanted 2? 
God damn it. Indy, listen. No matter how you spin it, there's still an intrinsic value to this remake. It's not just a lazy port, it's a complete reworking of the overall game. Take for example, the art style. The original game had what I would consider to be a much more cartoony art style, particularly with the face models, and while as an art style, I think this is very good. The remake on the other hand allows for much more subtlety with the body language and mannerisms, which amplifies this whole thing as a cinematic experience. The lighting system has been completely overhauled with dynamic shading and Oh my god, the particles! Just look at the particles! See, this is what I mean by preservation. Yes, this style is technically different, but it objectively enhances the atmosphere and the feel of the original game, and ultimately makes this the definitive way to experience the story, especially if you've never played it before. Okay, I, I kinda I kind of hear what you're saying, but how can you call it a definitive version if there's no online mode? Indy, be completely honest with me. Do you know a single person who has ever used the online mode for The Last of Us? Okay. No, but- See, this is exactly what I'm talking about. You're getting upset over nothing. If you want to complain about bad re-releases and remakes, I feel like it would make so much more sense to bring up Rockstar. The year is 2004. Bush just got re-elected, a lizard launched Facebook, and the best video game of all time had just been released. And to make matters better, so did my little pookie bear GTA San Andreas. Oh, look at him go! The public rejoiced, world hunger was ended, and there was absolutely nothing horrific going on in the Middle East. The game was a cultural phenomenon, and in my opinion, Opinion, this company would not be where it is today without this game being such a staple to the childhood of millions. So how do Rockstar decide to preserve this game's legacy, you might ask? They do it with death, mutilation, and woke politics? Who the fuck wrote this? Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy, the definitive edition. I'm not even going to touch on that title. The GTA trilogy is the most egregious example of what a remake should not be. The whole point of a good re-release is preservation. Presenting something old to a new audience so they can have a more definitive experience. So what did Rockstar do? <laughs> Ah, they fucked it. They fucked the game. All three of them, in fact. You want to play GTA 3? Here, have some rain instead. Vice City? Here you go, have some of this. And my personal favorite, San Andreas? Well... Let's talk about it. The radio stations were decimated. The art style was butchered. The textures were cannibalized. I'm, I'm just saying words now. None of this means anything. The remake was a serious letdown. I talk a whole lot about preservation, and this whole trilogy completely fails at even attempting preservation. Exhibit A. Rather than having this, it's gonna take a lot to drag me away from you. We have this. And this, for me, highlights what is arguably the biggest issue with the San Andreas remake, and that is... Fog. See, art style is infinitely more important than just slapping on ray tracing. And for a game that originally released in 2004, the developers worked with what they had, and what they did have was 32 megabytes of RAM, baby! And to their credit, they made it work wonders. They had not one, not two, but three cities and a fucking mountain! This was unprecedented. It was out Outrageous! How in God's name could they get away with doing this? Well, my friends, it was because of the fog, and it worked. It made sense because cities, fog, cities, mountain, it, it all just fucking worked. And as you, my smart little friend, have probably already worked out, there was no fog. It was just the render distance because that's what they had to work with back then. And what made it work so well was this illusion of scale. You, yes you, the gamer, the little seven-year-old gamer person could be fooled into thinking that this whole map was the literal size of... Ohio. I don't fucking know, Chuck. I'm not from your stupid country. What's important is how Rockstar decided to approach this in the remake. So, ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to present... This. Yep, they fucked it. That whole sense of scale is, um... Well, it's not here. It's not there. I can't see it anywhere. All of a sudden, these cities, this mountain, this world, it all feels so much smaller now. Hello? Yeah, uh, they added fog, mate. Oh, for God's sake. They did? Yeah. Yeah, they did. Ugh, it, it doesn't fucking matter. The game's still very much broken. Every couple minutes or so, you'll run into something like this randomly happening. And for no reason at all, the camera will just start giving you an epileptic seizure. Not to mention whatever the hell is going on with Ryder. Where is his hat? Why is his neck doing that? What the hell is going on here? It also doesn't help that everything's just butt ugly now. Granted, hmm, yeah, good lighting, yes, very good. But then we have whatever the hell this is. And I guess now would be a good time to address the character models. Kind of looks like my sleep paralysis demon. 
I don't think I want to talk about the character models anymore. In terms of the art style, the whole colour palette of everything has been completely disregarded in favour of sticking RTX on and hoping for the best, and the end result is having something that doesn't embrace the original whatsoever. It instead just comes across as if it's some kind of parasite that's wearing the skin of someone I once used to love. It kind of looks like it, it kind of sounds like it, but deep beneath the surface of the rotting corpse that is this game is something sick and twisted. Something that could well be the downfall of this stupid society we reside in. And that, my friends, is greed. Which leads me directly to the Red Dead 1 re-release from last year. Yeah, that's right, this segment isn't over yet, motherfucker. Re-releases and remakes are completely separate things, and I'll give my hats off to the donkey for explaining the difference pretty well in the intro. But what he failed to explain is what makes a bad remaster bad. And once again, my sights are right on you, Rockstar, you son of a bitch. It might be a bit controversial, but I'm a big advocate for game re-releases, even the lazy ones. But goddamn, man, even I can admit that Rockstar wasn't in their right mind when pitching this for release. I'm not mad at the port itself. I think it plays quite nice at 60 FPS, and if you needed a way to play this game officially with modern technology, this is probably the best you're gonna get. On the other hand though, that price tag has single-handedly ruined my childhood, stolen my wife, and it's even taken the fucking cat away from me. I miss you, Charlie, I miss you! I wouldn't mind so much if we got some bonus features, or maybe even some redone anything. But this is just the PS3 game with absolutely nothing added onto it. Not to mention it hasn't landed on PC either. I might just be salty that I can't pirate it. But hey, at least I can play it on the Switch now because we know how much I love Nintendo products. I love Nintendo products. Once again, this is just another example of Rockstar cannibalizing their player base and farming completely off nostalgia to make a quick buckaroo. And that's without even mentioning the four different versions of GTA 5. The five different versions of Liberty City stories? What the fuck? When did this happen? Why the hell is it on the fire stick? It 2016? And I haven't even touched on the 10 different re-releases of San Andreas? What the fuck? I'm at my wit's end. I'm losing my fucking mind here. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that pretty much wraps up my thoughts on Rockstar. So, so I guess with all this being said, uh, how do you, how do you feel about The Last of Us Part 2 being remastered? Oh my god, do you have Alzheimer's? I thought we just went over this. Okay, well I think even you can admit that the remaster is a bit of a different situation than Part 1. How? Well, the game isn't that old. The original came out in 2020, and a majority of the difference between the remaster and the OG is just a contrast slider. And a 60 FPS patch. And a new game mode. And lost levels. I mean, guess you can't be serious. How are you gonna justify $50 for a FPS patch? Patch. It's only a $10 upgrade if you own the original. Okay, well... Remind me, Indy. How much did you pay to upgrade to Spider-Man Remastered again? How, how the fuck do you even know I did that? Your PlayStation profile is public, man. I... I guess I just, I, I just don't see the point. Like, wouldn't, wouldn't you rather an original game? Aren't you one of those Twitter freaks who begs FromSoft for a 60 FPS patch on Bloodborne? Oh, I get it. So when it's a game you aren't fond of, it's 9-11 when devs release a 60 FPS update. Yeah, shut the fuck up, Indy. Okay, man. Well, Bloodborne is much more deserving of a 60 FPS patch than The Last of Us Part 2 is. Oh, really? Is it now? Uh, yeah. There's so much more complexity in-game with basic movement in comparison to The Last of Us. Sometimes all the difference between a win and a loss is a frame-perfect dodge input. Well, if you really want it that bad, why don't you just mod your PS5 or emulate it even? That's what I have to do with the old GT games. I shouldn't have to emulate or do any of that weird shit. It's an outdated game and it should be 60 FPS like all the other Souls titles on PS5. Are you gonna mod your PS5 to make The Last of Us Part 2 60 FPS? No, I'm just gonna buy the remaster. Well, how are you gonna say that and then tell me to mod my PS5? Because it's a viable option. If you really wanted 60 FPS on Bloodborne, you would make it happen. But instead, you're making a dumb YouTube video trying to throw big companies under the bus for your own laziness. They're the lazy ones. What what excuse do they have for making outdated, crappy games? Look, man, if you really want to play an old game in the way you want it to be, just go emulate it and mod it. No one is going to fix your gaming experience for you but yourself. If you wait around for AAA companies to really and genuinely care about how you feel, you're just wasting your time. So that's your that's your be-all, end-all take. Just go, and, just go and pirate everything. Mingus, why is it that we can't hold okay. big companies you accountable know, anymore? I'm starting to get real sick of your shit, Indy. Ever since I've gotten here on this video, all you've done 
is just yap and complain. I could show you Christ himself being birthed in the manger and you'd still find some way to criticize it. Most people can't even afford to buy themselves a meal, let alone a goddamn video game. And this? This is what you spend your time yapping about? Big companies are gonna do what makes them money and you're just gonna have to deal with it. You can cry on the internet all you want, but I'm not gonna participate in this pissing contest with you. You just... You make me sick, man. Mingus, I- You wanna know the actual reason I came over here in the first place? I wanted to play Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe with you, but you've just- You've ruined Wait. everything. Mingus, I love Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe. I love Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe too. Listen, man, I know things have been weird today, but I just- I don't wanna leave on this kind of note. I- My Switch dock is already plugged in. What What do you say we just do one stage? No complaining? No, no complaining. Okay, but you only get one stage. Is it me, or does this game fucking suck? Yeah, I was gonna- I was gonna say something, but then I said no complaining. You did get this on sale though, right? Hell no. I bought it for 60 quid. Holy shit, you got scammed. Man. Fuck Nintendo. Hell yeah, man. Fuck, fuck Nintendo. Nintendo. Yeah, yeah, fuck those guys. This game fuck fucking Nintendo. sucks. Yeah, I mean, fucking- fuck ugh, this, I fucking fuck hate this. Nintendo. This. And with that, our two unlikely companions found great solace in the fact that Nintendo sucks fat pinky dick, ending their conflict about re-releases and satisfying the viewers with a fulfilling ending to the video. They both later slipped onto the broken shards of glass left on the floor and died very painful deaths. Did he just- did he say we died? What the fuck? And with that, my name is Dr. Skipper. And you should all subscribe to me and my channel instead of these two fuckers as I actually orchestrated and wrote all the video. You already take my paycheck. You think you can get away with plagiarism? I'll show you, fucker. I'll show you! Guys, when do I come out and say my line? Guys? Oh.